We are on to winners finals after the slight distraction of the semifinals for losers or one semifinals one in, sorry semifinals two though semifinals two for losers bracket. Which I should probably actually say it's. Winners finals is starting. And Felthos has no start box. Oh crap. Well, at least it's the first match that's gonna have an exit bug. <sighs> that is weird. Oh, never mind. It looks like looks like everything's been sort of sorted out, I guess. Okay, yeah, there's still a bug. See, this, I thought this was fixed. When an exit happens, it should not have a win. That bug was supposed to have been fixed. I don't understand this. Also, yeah, I guess the bug with... Oh, no, that was saved. Yeah, I wasn't there and it was saved. Okay, never mind. The bug is just that... I don't know why it's the exit causes a win. That should not happen, ever. I thought the bug was fixed. Exit should exit should not cause a win. Shouldn't even call it game over. There's so many there's so many weird things going on with the game over procedures in this game that are, or game over functions rather. It's just pain. Anyway, I'm just gonna get some tea one sec. While they set up. All right, so that got started. Double light vehicle, interesting. Double light vehicle. Well, let's see. Delta's going for the scouting play. Yoxitoth going for more offensive play without scouting first. Okay, so Lord is using challenge names in the bracket. That makes sense. I wish Challenge would actually do the bracket names for double a limb more conventionally, but whatever. Yeah, Winner's Finals! That's what we were playing. I don't care what the Challenge bracket says, that's what it is. It is the Winner's Finals. Pretty much anyone who knows about double elimination tournaments would call it that. Because it is the last finals in the Winner's Bracket that involves purely people who are in the Winner's Bracket without pulling in people from the Loser's Bracket, which the Grand Finals does! Okay. Yeah, Yogstoth. Actually, is expanding a bit faster, I think. So, Feltas, so Yogstoth starting in Clone's position from the last game, and Feltas starting in the position that Forever had. Not a Forever, sorry, Yurga had. Other thing, and Clone won that game. But Clone won that game just due to good unit management in the mid game once they had stabilized. Yurga had a huge advantage throughout the entire game. So, Feltas right now in something of an advantageous position. Now, bearing in mind that neither of these players has actually lost a game, this is best of three, not best of one, so whoever loses this is going to still have a bit of a chance. But yeah, this is going to be Failthos, and I guess, well, best of three. This is going to be Failthos trying to stay in. I mean, if whoever loses this goes to loser's bracket, fights Kane. Yes, I, that's, that's right. Yeah, they, no, 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 sorry, Google Frog fights Kane. They fight the winner of Clone, Google Frog, and Kane. Sorry, my mistake. If whoever wins between Clone, Google Frog, and Kane fights against whoever loses between Failthos and Yogg's And then whoever wins with that goes to fight Grand Finals against whoever wins in this matchup. Which Yogstoth is actually... Well, I don't know. It's hard to call. This battle really will, will tell me. And... Failthos? Okay, that was really good. 
This harassment's basically free now. Oh, ouch. Building explosions. People forget them and then they die. Or they lose units. But yeah, that should even things out a bit. Yogg stopped and failed us. Now, once again, basically even for economy. Nice juke there, too. Getting that scorch around Yogstoth, but unfortunately running straight into more of Yogstoth. So Yogstoth will eventually, will ultimately stop that attack. But Failthus, able to contain Yogstoth a little bit. Just, you know, force him to have a little bit of respect. I mean, I can't quite just push out like that. Failthus is going to stop that. So Yogstoth, right now, still has a pretty powerful army. They have a more powerful army than Failthus. If they come in at the right angle, they should be able to actually leverage that to possibly breaking Yogstoth's main base. But they are, as they should be, because they don't know what's really in Yogstoth's base, so wise choice, going around. They want to see what's going on in this northwest, they want to just generally get an idea of what's going on. They don't want to just attack the main base and hope for the best. That's a terrible idea. So they're not doing it, because it'd be a bad idea. They know what they're doing. I, of course, can see everything, so for me, I can see what the best play would possibly be. But they can't, nor what I expect them to. Not at this stage in the game. Also, that probably isn't the best play either. Like, that'd be super risky if they did that. But, still coming from the right angle, they are actually going to be able to take out possibly a few of Feldhouse's... Ooh, no, Feldhouse is allowed to retreat here. Yogsdoth able to save things, though. Able to get that one Scorcher out of there. Unfortunately, putting themselves in a bit of a hole. That's the problem about attacking that part of the map. you got to be careful. You don't get in there. Oh, and this Scorcher's dead. Scorcher's so dead. Failthos... What the... That's, what the heck? Well, Failthos caught it out at any rate. Yeah, they have radar up there. They have sight. They caught that one out. That... What, oh, is that... No. I... What are they talking about? Oh, I see. How best to build radar. Well, at any rate, Radar here did a, did a fine job. So, Yogstoth knows what's going on. Sorry, Feltoth knows what's going on. Yogstoth probably assumes Feltoth has Radar. But that's always something to assume. But Yogstoth's still expanding. Obviously not much respect was earned from that earlier attack. I mean, Feltoth, they did some damage, but they honestly didn't have much to work towards. So they're starting to defend a bit more. They're getting a bit more insular and defensive. My game's getting surprisingly choppy. I have no idea why. That never happens. Oh, okay, it happens sometimes. <sighs> Skazi, it's the tournament conventions. That's how it works. That's how everyone talks about it. If you've ever been to a double limb tournament, which I've been to several myself, that's how it's always referred to. Always winners finals. I don't care what you say. That is the convention. I don't even have control over that. That's just the convention. The actual finals finals of whoever gets first place is grand finals. That's what it's called. Challenge is wrong. Or at least it's highly unconventional. That's the most charitable way I can put it. They are highly unconventional. But the use of Scorchers is not. That is definitely very conventional. And, well, Feltos basically has the Northeast now. Or at least they can pretty easily take it. They'll take a little bit of effort, but it's not too bad. They can actually take the Northwest pretty quick. I mean, they are, there's nothing there. Yogstoth is not going to attack it anytime soon. And down go the Scorchers. Because, of course. Okay, good. Someone stop Specs from actually talking to the players, because forever is like, Clon, I saw your replay! Your rating is awesome! But it's allies chat, so Clon's not going to be able to see it. So no cheating there. Yeah, it's, if it's... It's only bad if it's... Haha! <laughs> you built units without them, you don't stand a chance! Yeah, rating is pretty basic. I mean, raiding well is definitely notable, but honestly, Clone got raided so hard in that game against Yurga that Clone's skill is more to do with... Oh yeah, Clone's not playing right now. Never mind. They're just talking. Clone's skill has a lot more to do with being able to bounce back from that sort of play. They did not raid very well. I mean, they raided pretty well in Forever. They raided awesomely in Forever's game. But they got raided hard in Yurga's. Or their game versus Yurga. And failed us. Defending quite nicely against Yogstoth here. This is not going well for Yogstoth, having decided, you know what? 
Raider game's all well and good, but I'm gonna just just put a stop to it. No, no more Raider game. I'm done. Get the levelers up. I'm gonna say no to your Scorchers, or at least try. Now these Lotuses will be fine. Yeah, the Lotuses say no. Ouch! The Scorcher even trying to escape was not able to do so. Though so this this is going fairly well, I think, for both players. It's pretty even for both players at this point. Yogstoff does have the stronger army slightly. Mostly in the Wolverines, which are going to be a bit of an issue. I mean, Delta is starting to focus very heavily on static defense. But they have expanded to the northwest. That's the thing. They have their economy going. And Felthos can Oh, yeah. Get rid of that. So Felthos is pulling ahead a little bit economically. But Yogstoff does have the military breaking the defensive line. Bypassing the defensive line in one case. Because why not? Okay, Skazi's trolling me. Because he's just just being it. This guy's just being a butt. That's all. So fail thoughts. Yeah, that's the thing. That center is being a problem. The side is being a problem. Although these levelers were not together, that would have gotten rid of the that lotus. No problem. Those levelers were together. Fortunately, one of them. I think it just they got close, and then one of them decided of its own accord to go and attack and committed suicide. Committed suicide by LLT. But the center is falling. Like, that will not hold. Felthos will not hold the center. And the levelers... Sheesh, that's... they got a decent way of getting around. Actually, that's a great path. Even that new Lotus will not stop them. But unfortunately, they are not... Oh, never mind. There are more in the position. Never mind. Never mind. Everything's good for the Oxitoth. Felthos losing those Scorchers. So the Oxitoth is pulling pretty heavily ahead here. Hmm. Yeah, this is this center is going down. Feltos is losing the center, taking a bit of damage in the side, but not much. Just a bit. That leveler is dead. Right, it'll, it might kill a ravager. Actually, it will kill a ravager. Yeah, that ravager is dead. The ravager is dead, and then the leveler is dead. And that mech is not dead. That mech will live. But, ouch! That leveler not doing it anything. Another suicide by LLT. These these levelers really they need help. Like, you know, clicking back here when they hit an LLT. That would help. That would help a lot. Scorches on the other hand, they can just march forward. They can just kill everything. And they will. So Felthos just getting pressured on all sides. The center is basically no longer theirs. And the western side got a lot of pressure, but it's actually stabilized pretty well. The eastern side taking a lot of damage. Not really much in the way of defenses right now, but that could change pretty quick. This Lotus is going to be a problem. Yogstoff is... Are they going to worry about that? Yeah, they're going to worry about that. They're going to get rid of it, too. That Ravager. What's what's their deal with the Ravager? The Scorchers? Yes. The Scorchers need to regroup, though, and they are right at the edge of where I'd say is the safe area to regroup to deal with the Ravagers. These Scorchers over here getting rid of power. Good plan. Get rid of the solar plants. I mean... Yeah, get rid of the solar plants. The only thing other than that they could do is rush in here and try to take out metal extractors, and that would be suicide. But these solar plants are definitely good targets. They're expensive. They're worth a lot in terms of resources. So, yeah, they're good targets. Unfortunately for Yogstoth, they were not paying attention for the last two. Yeah. As I mentioned before, as, as has been mentioned to me before... When you're in the enemy's main base, or near it even, get rid of power, or sorry, get rid of energy. Metal isn't as big of a concern, they will reclaim that back. But getting rid of energy, that'll take them a lot longer to rebuild. Now at this point, Failed House is not actually being bottlenecked by energy, but it's closer. It's four solar collectors closer than it was before. It's like eight energy closer. Granted, as I say, that a fusion reactor is starting to be built, so that won't be a concern. Hmm, okay. So Yogstoth going for the Rapiers. Felthos going for no change. Going for Ravagers. So yeah, the Rapiers, that'll that'll fix it. They'll slow down the Ravagers quite rightly, and then... Then the Scorchers will finish them off, and that'll be it. The western side's all defenses. The eastern side is also all defenses and reclaim. Wow, Yogstoth's got a lot of reclaim, and they're spending it all, too. 
That's 70 metal building up rapiers. That's like one... Well, one rapier every three seconds. Yeah. They're going to have a massive army. It's going to be a huge shock for Feltos. Feltos is not reading this. No, this they aren't realizing, hey, wait a second, I'm not getting hit by ground. There might be air switch. 12 minutes into the game, there would be by now. No, Feltos is not making any guesses in that, re in that respect. They are not assuming anything. No razors or any other response. A dozen rapiers coming up, and like I said, one more every three seconds. So this is... This, I don't know. I'm thinking, is Yoxtoth getting their hand forced? I think they kind of are. Like, these Ravagers are causing a lot of havoc around that side of the map. And as well, this Ravager up here that's dead, but still, it's... They're getting taking a lot of damage. I think that's probably why the Rapiers are coming in. Because I think the Rapiers are coming in a little bit sooner than I'm sure would have been preferred for Yogg'Sothoth. They probably would have wanted to wait as long as possible, get as large an army of Rapiers as possible, just before the Razors come up. Because the Razors are coming up, I'm sure... Yeah, there's the Caretaker. Gunship plant. Where are the Razors? That's going to produce Tridents, but where are the Razors? That's weird. No, they're going to, I guess, go for Tridents and cut their losses as far as the Rapiers are... Or sorry, as far as the Ravagers are concerned. But that seems like an extremely unwise idea. Like, they're going to lose this... This level's going to go down. Most of this eastern side's going to go down. Like, they're going to take a lot of damage over here. I think this... The lack of rap... Seriously, are there... There's nothing. There's nothing. No rape... No rapiers... Not rapiers. Razors. No razors or anything. S is the loader supposed to screw me up, not R. No razors or anything. 16 rapiers are... Bearing... Actually, four, oh, 11 are here, but... There's another 5 in reserve. Like, that east side's dead. Probably just rush through from there to the center. The tridents are up, but if the Scorchers get to them first, the tridents are dead. And, yeah, the Scorchers... Scorchers can deal with them! What are you doing? Scorchers, kill them! Oh, okay, they're just going for the Ravagers. Do all these as best as possible. Are tridents coming up here? No, pure rapier. Kind of risky, but yeah, I mean, just... As long as they tag the Ravagers, then that's basically... They're not going to be able to do any more damage. Like, tag the Ravagers and that's enough. Ah, okay, there's the Razor. I was wondering if I was going to show up. Still, a lot of damage was dealt. Again, Feltos' army is half that of Yogg'Soth by value. Although, admittedly, they do have type counters. So, that's like... How much is... So, about 3,000 is not relevant. Actually, that's the advantage. <laughs> Never mind. They're about even for anything that Yogg'Soth can use freely. And that might change, though. That will change pretty quick. These Scorchers are going to, well, get rid of the Ravagers. Probably get rid of the Tridents. I'm not sure if the Tridents are going to fly too high. You know, the Tridents are pretty low to the ground. They should be fine. The Tridents should be hit here. But the Leveler was... Man, those Scorchers were all bunched up. That was, what, 20-something Scorchers? Oh, there's still 20-something Scorchers, but that was... 20-something Scorchers before it all exploded. Wait, where are they? I see 20 something. Oh, there they are. They're all in back in the base. That's why. There's only a few up front. But yeah. Yeah, those tridents. Those tridents being a pain in the butt. That's that's the problem. They're not being very use they're not being very helpful. And now with rapiers coming up for fail sauce. Yeah, fail sauce of their own rapiers. They actually have more. Wow, yeah, fail sauce is getting air dominance here. And the levelers are going to be able to stop any Scorcher attacks coming in here. As long as the Scorchers are in the right position. They're attacking the right angles. Why are they attacking here? This is the wrong angle. This is, Okay, Yogg'Sothoth wants to lose. Okay, I guess we're going to be playing on Yogg'Sothoth's choice of map. I mean, Yogg'Sothoth decided they didn't want to win anymore. I honestly thought they were wanting to win. I mean, that's kind of the point of a tournament, but I guess... Moves like that, I honestly don't know. Okay, Strider Hub up. No striders up. Definitely the economy to build up striders, but not much else. Hmm. Very strange. So at this point, the center's been retaken by Failthus, or kind of split. Eastern side, once again, retaken by Failthus, and Yogg'Sothoth does have the western side. Well, there's a lot of defenders on the western side. But no easy way to attack for Yogg. Failthus actually getting the military advantage at this point, too. And does have the type counters. They have air control on top of that, so they can actually use them. 
Yeah, this is going... This is going to be bad for Yogg's death. This might actually turn it around. Not totally sure. The Razor's going to be a limiter, but even then, it's not that much of a limiter. Not when the levelers and the main force coming in here. And there's just so many of them that the Ravagers... I mean, the Ravagers are already losing the levelers. There's just so many of these things. Like that Razor... It's going to go down. Yeah, this side can break fronts. Very true. It can, and probably will. Yeah, especially with that Stardust gun. That's... That might be it. But at this point, another Stardust. More Stardust coming up. Instant Stardusts. That's kind of why Wolverine's being part of this force would have been a really good idea. Just to deal with Instant Stardust. But even then, it doesn't really matter that much. The Raiders are doing a, a job. Not a great job, but they're doing a job. And, yeah, that Razor is the amount I've been doing enough. Even with the Razor, it's not enough. Wow. Yeah, Yogstoth is basically won. Sorry, lost. <laughs> uh, one of those things. The, the game state is being decided. But it, the game state is being decided against Yogg. It, it, it's Veldoss' game. Veldoss basically has this. Yogstoth might be going for a counter. Oh, they're going for counter defense. They're going for a counter defense over in the northwest side of the map, but it's just going to be like send the levelers, or send the ravagers through, tear apart the defenders, and then I think at that point Yogg's have to realize we've got to move on to game two. So that is well, the mighty forest, the mighty forest of defenders, no will not stop. It just cares more about Yogg's commander, but no, it's not going to stop this many ravagers. They'll tank it all. Yogg's commander down, so that's all the construction of the defense down, and then the defense themselves are going to go down. Okay, not quite all of it, but then, no, it's just gone. Hmm. Yep. Defender nest is gone. And, although Dante finally has come up, the Dante has come in. Yogstoth basically, basically their last ditch effort. Tear apart Feldoss' army with the Dante, tell, tell apart Feldoss' defenses with the Dante, and then they might be able to do a comeback. All these Scrapers are going to slow that Dante to a crawl, so I don't know what chance it has, honestly. Yogstoth doesn't even have, oh, they have Tridents now. Just now getting Tridents. In fact, they only have, they have the only Tridents in the field. I didn't realize Feldoss had lost theirs. Apparently they had. Concerning for Feldoss, but still... Like I said, this is kind of a last-ditch effort. If that Dante goes down, and it's retreating as it is, so it's not necessarily in the best position. But if the Dante goes down, that's going to be a major problem. As in, Veldas is going to be winning game one, and Yogstoth will have to pick the map. Not sure what map they'll pick against Veldas. Hmm. I'm really not sure. Felthos would probably want to go for a map that has... De I mean, both of them are probably comfortable enough with economy play. But I don't see that being a problem. Like, I don't really know which one they could pick that would really beat the other. Hide and Seek, of course, is Felthos's map. So they'll probably pick that again. Because they know that map. But... I don't know how much it would really help them. Yogstoth, on the other hand, might go for CCR, might go for DSD, might go for something completely different, I don't know. And now Tridents, for Yogstoth's attempt to get back in the game and force Veltos to pick the map. Okay, I'm being facetious. Veltos has many Tridents. I mean, it's just... It's kind of even, it's really coming down to unit types. And management, but at this point, Yogstoth's losing a lot of their air force. And as as soon as Feltos gets that, Yogstoth is going to lose everything. As soon as Feltos gets rid of all these tridents, which is going to be tricky, the tridents are coming in very fast. Actually, it's damn near impossible. The tridents are coming in one every three seconds. That's going to be a lot with Feltos, with Yogstoth's forces. Like, as long as they can be more or less kept in check, and at the same time, yeah, with same thing here. Or not quite, no. No, Yogstoth might actually win the air war here. 
just with the tridents, like the sheer number of tridents being built up. Although, okay, there, there we go, there's the crashers. Let's say ground-based AA will make the difference, and there are the crashers. <sighs> well, there's your ground-based AA. But still, like, Yogstoth not not going down quite yet, but they're in a very tight spot. Like, if they lose this Dante, I'd say that they're dead. If they lose the Tridents, I'd say they're probably dead. But the Dante especially, that's that's their biggest asset. That's probably the thing that's really keeping them in. Keeping them, keeping them with some hope of having a chance. I mean, I'd say they have a chance as long as they have the Dante. If they lose the Dante, it's going to be much, much tougher. What? No, why are they not building anything? What are they building? I mean, they have... Yogg-Soth is spending money somewhere. Oh, pushing out tons and tons of light vehicles. That's where it is. That makes sense. And now the Dante is dead. The Dante is dead. With that, yogg will end up being roughly even in terms of military value. Actually, way ahead in economy. A lot of reclaims going on, apparently. Looks like it, because, yeah, there's a fair amount of reclaim going on. Giving Yogg-Soth an edge, but Failthos with that air edge, the polish is ripping everything apart, and Failthos... Okay, now they have to worry about ground-based AA. That eastern front didn't really move. That was just a meat grinder. Nothing happened! And now the western front. Also kind of a meat grinder. Well, this is... This is getting grindy. We were talking about World War One earlier. That, that Here you go. At least the middle period. Anyway, I, th I still think Philthus has some more chance, but it's it's becoming tough. I think it's it's stabilizing again. It's, it's evening out. I just can't I can't call it anymore. I thought Philthus had had it. I look like they were just punching through, doing a ton of damage. It was just a matter of as long as they punch through it again, just rip through all the tridents, it'll be fine. But no, Yogstoth managed to stabilize with tridents, and now retaking air control thanks to the crashers. And all that reclaim. How much reclaim is even here? Like 7,000 reclaim in this... Well, just in the area that's actually being used. Yeah. 8,000 reclaim. Well, between the two players. So like 5-ish thousand for Yogg. So for the rest of the game, basically, it's going to be an extra 20, 30 metal. Same for Failthos. And Felthos doesn't even have the infrastructure to spend it all. Well, there should be more gunship plants. They are getting the Strider. The Strider hubs that they actually can help. But, yeah, Yogg-Soth already has that infrastructure. Felthos is not. Felthos is accessing. Or was accessing. That will at least help a bit. But, yeah, it's just... That's so much metal right now. Basically, they're denying yogg more than they're taking metal for themselves. But now Feltas' army is getting so small, and they had their army was basically their air force. They've lost their air force, and the loss of ground force they have, they're they're basically are they? Well, they're basically on the back foot, but they're not dead exactly yet. I'm getting reluctant to call it, but I'm starting to think it might just. It, I think it is. I think Yogg-Soth basically a good push. They're not having one, but a good push will win. But they haven't won yet. Belthos still has a way back, potentially, with the Dante and with other units being built up. Well, mostly the Dante. But yeah, they have they still have a chance, you know, they can still build stuff. They can still get themselves back into the game. They just They just need to get their units back. Pure Ravager, I don't know. I think that really that's the biggest thing that's been giving Yogstoth a lot of breathing room. They haven't gone pure Ravager, like Ravager Crasher and a bit of leveler for a while. A strong Scorcher push would actually do a lot of damage here if that's what Felthos went for. Felthos also going for some air. Okay, so both of them going for air, both of them going for ground. With Dante support. And I mean, Yogstoth did lose that Dante. They reclaimed it, along with pretty much everything else in this area. Oh, they reclaimed it a lot faster than I thought they would. Sheesh, they pretty much... They've eaten the entire thing. Oh no, there's still a 5,000. There's still loads of reclaim. But hey, Dante, here to kill you all. At least all the workers. Get rid of that economic boost. That'll be huge. How many workers are even here? Like, there's gonna be 10 or something? 12. There are 12 masons for... No, 15 masons. 17 masons for Yogg-Stoth alone. And a lot of them have gone down thanks to the Dante, but still. 
That's a lot of masons. And oof, ouch, that crash, those crash or deaths, that trident death, that's now well, the crashes are in reserve, so it's not as big of a deal, but yeah, anything moving forward is gonna have to deal with that on top of the rapiers and everything else. Or no, no, Filthus is not going for rapiers? What? Apparently not, and Yogstop deciding, well, I'm not gonna be able to hit the right side, let's hit the center. I can see the logic in that. But at the same time, I can also see a bunch of Stardusts and Lotuses. This will probably break. This will probably fall. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't think this is going to actually work out in practice. How much? Oh, is it got? Yeah, it's got an analyze. Like 20, yeah, 24 build power. Yeah, two and a half normal commanders are in that one commander. But once again, Feldhaus doesn't have much of a diversity. I mean, they have the Tridents, but that's about it. And Tridents kind of lose to Tridents. Although this Dante gets close, it might actually be able to do some... Well, it'll get rid of the Tridents, no problem. I know if it'll get rid of the Rapiers, though. And the center actually does hold! Barely, but yeah, Failthoss able to hold the center. But right side, once again, becoming vulnerable. Failthoss rebuilding pretty quick. From a disadvantageous position, but at the same time, that Dante is getting hurt. No Mace is in position to heal... No Masons at all to heal it. That is strange, but there's so much damage coming out of there, it almost doesn't matter. Just needs to heal that up. Get those masons in there. Get that healing going. Why are you reclaiming? Oh, well, it's dead now. <laughs> like, why are you reclaiming? It's not dead yet. Well, it is now, but it wasn't briefly. Hmm. Yeah, Yogg's I don't know. I, think I might want to have to reverse that particular analysis I made before. Whereas the Yogstoth's Dante was the only one keeping them alive. Well, it was until they managed to stabilize because of it. I think Feldhaus's Dante was the only thing keeping them alive, though. And Yogstoth went from being slightly ahead to even when they lost the Dante. Feldhaus went from being even to slightly behind when they lost the Dante. In terms of total army value. And these brawlers are being a pain, and... More metal! More metal everywhere. This entire area, this meat grinder, has been just a huge trough been a buffet for Yogg-Sothoth's builders. Even the ones that were killed, I mean, with all the ones that got killed by the Dante, which actually was like two or three, not that many can think of it. But all the ones that were killed in that fight, it just doesn't matter. So much metal. So much metal available. All you can eat. Yogg-Sothoth's not letting that go completely to waste. I mean, they're, they're taking some too. Not even let that completely go to yogg -Sothoth. But still, they aren't are fall behind. If these Stardusts go down, there's no real instant Stardust option right now. There's no builders around there. Western Front becoming a bit of a problem, though. But yeah, that Eastern... Okay, Yogg-Sothoth's trying to break the center once again. This actually isn't a bad angle. There's a Lotus. There's a few more Lotuses in Defender. That Stardust will still be a problem. As long as they can hold the Eastern Front. But this is risky, because Feldhoss's counterattack is coming in. Could actually get rid of all these workers, and that could turn it around once again. If these workers go down, then Yogg-Soth will have nothing in the way of economy. And their economy will be massively reduced compared to, to, compared to Felthos's. And yeah, the, the Masons have been for now pushed back. But Ravager counterattack with the Brawlers, so Felthos is not quite able to completely secure the area. Neither player has been really able to completely secure this area. It's been a meat grinder for most of the game. But it's still fairly even. I keep thinking, oh, someone's going to win. Oh, Feltas, they almost lost because of their Dante. And then before, Yogg-Soth, oh, they almost lost because of losing their Dante and losing a bunch of their base. But no, everyone's stabilized. Yeah, Thunderbird. That's a really good point to sprung. Thunderbird, build an air factory, build Thunderbird. That's actually one of the downsides of... Well, not really downsides, but I mean, it's one of the things you have to bear in mind with Gunship being the strong option in the meta. Is that, yeah, Gunship has a lot of really strong general anti-ground options and is generally a strong factory. But the Air Factory, that has Thunderbird. That can stun out an entire army of Ravagers, leave them totally open, rip them apart, and basically allow you to stabilize in a fight like this. And another Dante up. Yogg's not going for it themselves, just continuing to push as much as they can out of their factories. With like 116 metal income, that is amazingly high. But yeah, I mean, look at all the look at all these builders. I mean, there's... Yeah, there's 16... There's plus 16 metal in these builders. Just the ones over here. 
as we can see with them stopping and then everything going away. Yeah, there's 10,000 metal. Whoever is able to secure this will probably win just by the economy. I don't see how anyone who gets 10,000 metal... I mean, they might they have to hold it. It has to stabilize. But it's going to be hard to win. I mean, it's kind of been the reason why people have been stabilizing so much. is because this reclaim field has been very effective. But looks like Fail Thoughts might have won the day. Hard to say, though, because Yogstoth will come in with a counterattack. When those Ravagers counterattack, it's going to be a bit of a problem. But that Dante is there to catch it. And the Ravagers that came over here, just, yeah, metal delivery, donated themselves. They, they did not survive that Stardust. The two Stardusts. But that counterattack, like I said, there, there's the counterattack. So once again, not really secure. How many builders are here? 22 Masons just on the screen. So that is about 100 metal income when all of them are reclaiming. That's plus 100 if they're all reclaiming. I mean, they aren't because if they were, that would be that'd be suicide. But yeah, if they all reclaim, that's... Oh, never mind. That's not all of them belong to Yogg. 24 belong to Yogg. Yeah, 8 or so belong to Felthos. Still another strider coming? No, not even a crow or anything. Yogg's not continuing to go with Brawlers. I'm kind of surprised they aren't going with a Crow. I, I'm, I'm really surprised. I mean, I guess they're focusing on the anti-air, but yeah, a Crow would probably also... Like, a Thunderbird would deal with this, a Crow would deal with this. I don't think a Black Dawn would deal with this. Maybe, I'm not sure, I don't think so. Although they are bunched up a lot, it might actually work. I have not seen a Black Dawn in months. It's really fallen out of favor. And the Dante is is doing a good job of it. Was doing a good job of it thanks to the ultimatum that I hadn't noticed until just now. Wow, Yogsatoth. That was That was appropriately out of nowhere. Ultimatums do that. Yeah, that's that's the trench. That's the hole it dug. It dug a massive hole there. Well, there's a thing. Okay, Kane has apparently knocked out. I'll get them in when the next match comes in. All right, so well, whatever that is, sheesh. I won't get them in then though, because catching up to 35 minutes worth of play is probably difficult. Although they might have already done so. Not sure. They already have, okay. Well, I'll still wait for the next game. And the ultimatum finally going down, but after getting rid of so many, that was, that was a really good choice. I'm surprised I missed that. But that was a really good option. Surprisingly effective. And another Dante coming in from Thoughts. I don't know about another ultimatum, but that was... That one did a really good job. Really made me eat my words. Sheesh. I mean, this is just escalating to... I'm actually surprised. Where are the silencers? It occurs to me, we're half an hour into the game. Both players have been running between 80 and 100 metal income. Where are the silencers? Where are the nukes? Like, of any description. That's another option. Silencer. Just, bam, in the middle of their base. Because, basically, the player's going back and forth in the fight. Like, the battle itself is going back and forth. One side wins, takes some ground. The other side happens to have an army in reserve, takes it back. No one ever really takes it. Felthos right now has most of this, but... They'll probably lose it. I mean, there's going to be... And the Brawler's going to come in. It's going to be a problem. A bunch of Raptors coming in. It's going to be a problem. So it'll probably turn around. And then it'll turn around again. And then turn around again. And then turn around again. But if someone nukes... Someone fires a silencer into the main base, wiping out all the factories and all the production and everything, then it's going to take a while to rebuild. And as that happens, they'll end up losing everything else. And goodbye, Crashers. But yeah, they'll end up losing everything else. The counterattack won't be possible. And then... That'll be it. But I don't think either player wants to spend the three minutes to do so. And another ultimatum. Yeah, I don't think either player wants to spend three minutes, like however long it takes to build, which is, it's pretty expensive. I can't remember what it is offhand. It's 8,000. So yeah, that's a minute and a half if the entire economy goes into it and all the reclaims being taken. And no, that's that's it. Yogg-Soth realizes they can't really do much against Feltus. Feltus did get the advantage at the very end, barely. 
and that that's game one. That was really sloggy. So I will get Kane in for game two. Stay tuned for that. That's going to be up in a moment. So let's just go over the bracket as has been so far. So apparently Google Frog beat Kane. And Google Frog and Kluwen are probably slogging it out right now. And we're on to game two of whatever it will be between Felthos and Yoxitoth. I don't know where it'll be. I'm going to have to mention I need to take a bit of a break to pull in Kane. But then we will have... Oops. Then we'll have game two on Yogstoth's choice of map. Man, that was just a slog. Oh yeah, Goliath's map. There are so many good options. We don't get to late game very much in 1v1. When we do, it's like, this is, this is kind of slow going. So yeah, I'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned. Welcome back, 0K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333, now joined by... Your... Kane. Yes. So yeah. we have... I have co-commentator. Hooray! Yay. And we're on Delta Dry. We're actually on Comic Catcher, because apparently Delta Seas Dry... Thank God is not considered valid for this tournament. What? Why not, man? We just played on LLT Complex. Apparently, it's only it, it's everything other than the stuff that Lordy picks has to be from the one v one pool. I don't, I don't know. know why we played an LLTA Complex. That was <laughs> just crap. But it was, it was definitely different than uh, most of the one v one tournaments. So anyway, we are back up, and yeah, Clone and Google Frog are duking it out in the losers' prefinals. While Felthas and Yogstoth continue on to game two on Comic Catcher Redux, because like I said. DSD is not valid. Oh, well, even Comic Catcher Redux is going to be a bit of slog, but hey, at yeah, least... At least a, another macro map. Yeah, like the last one too. Man, I don't know. You saw the Eye of Horus, where it was just... The Eastern Front is just a meat grinder. It's like, yeah. the Eastern Front was bleeding the Somme. It was the Battle <laughs> of the friggin' Somme. It was very done. It was like... Every terrible World War One trench warfare thing. It's a good way to put it. Or at least I can desecrate the memory of every single terrible World War One trench warfare thing by associating it with that particular, like it's ten basically the same as a video game. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I actually need to find. It's not really enough World War One video games. It makes my Remembrance Day specials hard to do. Well, I mean, a World War One video game might be a little bit less exciting than the World War Two video games. I don't know. The, the Company of Heroes World War One mod is actually pretty good. All right. And Red Baron is an awesome game. And then there's a shooter. Called Verdun, though, supposedly in development, but I don't know what's happening with that. It's just, I want to do World War One games for the Remembrance Day thing, because that's what Remembrance Day is about, primarily. Yeah, that'd be cool. But, so, a light vehicle mirror here. Yes, yes, indeed. Failthot's going for the less aggressive option. Yogstoth's opening up, as I did, I think, did that before, as I recall, in another matchup. Well, they went for the, they went for the aggressive Scorchery option. Mm hmm. Fiery option. Yeah, it's going to be a nice uh, sort of matchup here with the more macro focus versus the more, um, I guess, aggressive start. If Filtos can hold here against uh, Yogg's aggression, of course, it's going to put him in a really good position heading into the mid-late game. So that's always the inherent gamble. Yeah, and I think Filtos can. And we saw last game that Filtos didn't have much of a problem holding Yogg's back. It was a couple occasions where Yogg's got to get in, but even then, they were, like, basically jumping in behind enemy lines. So I don't think Feldhouse is going to have a problem. This early in the game, it's a little bit harder because you have so many more fronts to defend until you get the entire side defended, right. the, entire, the whole thing secured. But I think you'll be fine. is really good at uh, defender coverage, though. That's sort of his thing. So it's going to play out really well here on Comic Catcher if he can control and keep the raids down. Yeah, although right now there's a nice opening between the defenses and Feldhouse's base. Big win, big hallway right there. Yogg'Sothoth, on the other hand, they just have the front side not even defended at all. Because <laughs> Yogg'Sothoth likes to play... I can't remember... Yeah, it was Yogg'Sothoth that was playing when they were playing against... Oh, i got to just look it up now. I have to look it up. Yeah, Yogg'Sothoth versus Yurga when they were playing on this map. They basically went for aggression to mask naked expansion, and they won that way. And they're trying that again. And they're hitting the one undefended mechs. Oh, well. 
not worth the scorcher there, but I definitely like the strategy, sort of the theory being that if you apply the pressure at your opponent's base, he has to keep his army back here, and then you can sort of expand uh, without any interference. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened in the Yurga game, and it, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Dog Stealth won that way. Yep, absolutely. So it's just whether or not Felthos will actually get intimidated by that's the question. Sure, and and really uh, it depends how Feltots responds. If he's able to sort of whittle down the forces that Yagzatot sends into raid and then reclaim, he's going to end up with yet another uh, economic advantage. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, that's that is the gamble about it is that if you do lose the units, then the reclaim just becomes metal donation. Mm -hmm. Pretty even so far, though. In fact, it looks like Yag might have an economic lead at the moment. Very slight. They weren't able to quite get rid of one of the metal extractors, though, so they're not as ahead as they'd like to be. But yeah, still, they're actually getting in pretty hard. Yogstoth killing them, stopping their own Got raid. a little too close to that mechs. They keep but, forgetting. Uh, metal extractors explode and kill yeah, units. Everything uh, explodes and kills things beside it. Every unit has a death explosion. All of them. Hey, Azola Ghost Stalker finally showed up. A little late. <laughs> Beltas doing a little rating of his own. Yep. If he slips in behind this LT, he sort of has a, a free ride here into the back of Yagzatot's base, but... Yeah, I think... I think No, they don't know. Or they might know. They should know. I don't think he's going to slip do, past that They do, they do now, LT. and they're... No, they're not even retreating. That sucks. Because that would have been easy. You're mm -hmm. right. That would have been just... Actually, it wouldn't have been that easy, because it would have had to take take out the Solar Collector, and at that point, they would have had to take out the Mason before it builds up another LLT to kill them. I might head for the Caretakers if I were in that position, but I guess we'll never know. Ow. Oh, I see what you mean. Slip around on the right in the south side of the big wall. At least that's what I think I would do from the spectator view. I don't think you'd live long enough. <laughs> I think you're right. Not with one Scorcher. Two or three, yes. Not one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like Veltas is trying again, this time with a lot more Scorchers. I don't oh, think no. it'll work. Heading into the center I, I, here. Well, it's going to be forced work. back, of course, by Yogg's Zatat's army. Yeah, exactly. Yogg's army's in the way. It's not like Yogg has to retreat into their base. They're they're on the defensive side. They're able to body block, and they have a bunch of Lotuses around their base. Mm -hmm. There aren't really any... They're a bit in the back. They get around, but they're not really getting around. A couple of Scorchers are about to die, too, as a result of trying. And they're not really going around the long way to get around the back, where it is undefended. It's mm -hmm. totally undefended around the back. That's open, but everything else is not. Oh, he's really committing to the Scorcher Dive here. It's not going to pay off with these LLTs in the way. Well, it oh, might. Oh, yes, oh, it will. They sneak in, and there they go. Wow. Yeah, down goes Feltas' Shows commander. what I know. Scorcher Dives are never to be underestimated. Mm. And I say that as another Scorcher Dive happens in the north. We'll see what will happen. The, L the Lotus is dead. Actually, yeah, most of these power plants are dead. It's going to come down to where Feldos chooses to attack. Because Feldos is going to be able to get rid of basically whatever they uh, like for the first minute. He's going to waste some time on the solar wall. Uh, that actually isn't a terrible-ish idea. I mean, most I'd say it's not terrible -ish because at the same time, yeah, they're wasting some time, but they're also well, bottlenecking Yogstoth's production. Yeah, that's true. That's almost all of his energy there. He has just three solars left after they clean this up. No, five. Or four, five, seven... Eight. So maybe half of their solars, but still. Yes. They won't That's... be able to use all of this reclaim immediately, at least. Yeah, but like I said, that was that was the choice. That was the uh, choice that Feltas made. Probably on the wrong side he, of the wall there, though. He's just suicided a huge part of his army. Yeah. If they stayed so on the eastern side of the wall, it would have been fine. Yeah. Just ripping yeah, apart the rest true. of them. Or just not bothered. But I think that mm -hmm. it was a good idea to bother. Yeah. The only... It was a reasonable thing to do, given what he knew. Yeah. The only other choice is to try to take out the factory, and I don't think they know where the factory is. Right. Definitely. But I mean, it did slow... I think it probably slowed down Yogg's production a little bit. It's just so, didn't bond like it as much as I'm sure they'd like it to have. So Feltas is going to be relying really heavily on these defenses for the next little bit. He's going to... He has a small army to engage with, but he's definitely going to need to pick the engagements in range of these defenses. And, of course, try to keep that reclaim field there. Yeah. Oh, man! Pushing their mason into its death. Real <laughs> smooth. I'm sure that was totally unintended. That was just a thing that happens. Gotta be careful. Units units can be pushed around. Very true. Remarkably easily. So Yogg has some 
idle constructors, he can move up to this reclaim field too. He, he definitely, I would say, has control of it, at least for the moment. Yogzatah's yeah, army is busy yeah, going around the sides. Really nice split attack, by the way, from Yogzatah. Well, the eastern side's pointless. The western side is the only one that's sure. a threat. 12-15. Sure. Even the western side is not that big of a threat, thanks to the defenses. Mm. So yeah, that actually didn't do much. I mean, Failsauce didn't really seem to get too scared by it, and Yogzatah basically donated yep. a bunch of metal. About to donate some more here to the east yep. as well. At the cost of one metal extractor, maybe, at most. A couple of LTs, definitely yeah. not worth it. So if Eltos can get his reclaim game going, then he should be able... Well, he'll have a good chance to come back anyway. Yeah, but where's the nearest mason? That's the thing. There aren't a lot of masons over to that area with, like, 1,700... Wow! No, yeah. 1,500, sorry. 1,500 metal. And then the eastern side of the map, there's 300, which is still pretty good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 1,500 metal. Just there for the taking. Near Yogg's base, too, so that's priority. Probably one mason or two he could afford to send up there, but... Well, I think, well, if you notice, Veltas is making a fusion plant, so it looks like they're trying mm -hmm. to get their energy up before they do that. That's right. Because otherwise they'll bottleneck. Because they're mm -hmm. already almost excessing metal as it is, so that makes it's true. sense. true. Why they attacked in the meantime, though, I'm not sure. No, oh that, boy. That was a mistake. He definitely didn't need to put more reclaim on the field, and especially not right next to Yagzatot's commander. No, they don't have enough to deal with that. So now they have, now they can reclaim, now they have the energy to reclaim with. And it looks like... Kicking out some masons now. They? I think that's his plan. One, two, three in a yeah, row. Yeah, no, they're, they're definitely reclaiming. I just noticed their economy bumped up, but that probably was just they got more metal extractors. So yeah, that's that is the plan. And whether or not it'll succeed is, and they got to play more defensively. I mean, this these slashers are now in the way. That's that's a big problem. Wait, are Ouch, they? Yeah. Wait, what are these doing? They're they're going towards the center. They're not reclaiming. Why are they not reclaiming? Why is there no reclaim order? What's going on? There's not. There's a thousand metal in a really safe spot. Oh, sorry, not a thousand. There's well, actually, now they've lost the commander part of the reclaim, which is the majority of the reclaim. Oh boy. Still nice. Okay, good harassment going on. Yogstoth did get a bit too naked. Didn't get a chance. Good to harassment. Yeah, Definitely, he, and Feltos doing a good job dislodging Yogzatoth from the center, adding just even more reclaim now. Okay, the there we go. That's a way Excellent. back in. Excellent. But I was about to say, because the thing that Yogzatoth did in the game with Yorga, I don't know if you watched it because I think you were playing at the time, was that they did the naked expand with the aggression, and then as they, in the second to last wave, they started really ramping up defense production. And then the last wave, they had plenty of defenses, and then by the time that Yorga went for the counterattack, Yogzatoth had basically no longer been naked expanding. They set up all the defenses they needed. Their expansion got closed. Beautiful. Didn't have the chance this time around, though. Mm. So that's the thing. Failed us. At least not with that attack, but the thing is, failed us. This is now what's happening. Yogstoth is setting up the defenses. They're going, okay, this is where I am. I'm going to consolidate here. And Yogstoth should probably realize that and either try to find as many open poking holes as possible, or it hasn't consolidated yet, mm -hmm. or consolidate themselves, because they do have more territory, I think. Kind of weird. It's kind of lopsided. Yeah, it's hard to say, really. And Feldas is not reclaiming. At all. He's heading up the north to raise some more with Scorches, but I feel like he really needs to be focusing on this reclaim field. He had control of it for so long, before, and he hasn't capitalized on it yet. Yeah, it was like two whole minutes, I think? Hmm. It's just... Where? Why? Right. What? And it really doesn't help that he's suiciding his Scorches in his attempts to raid. I mean, it's definitely a good idea to try to raid, but he needs to be more ginger about it and pull I back think, when he does. I think Feltas is choking. I mean, Drone was mentioning it before that Feltas has a tendency to choke in tournaments, and I think that's what we're seeing. Mm. I, I think Feltas is starting to, is forgetting about the fundamentals Defenders. of the game and so forth. Yeah, and the defender placement, their Lotus placement. I mean, they don't have any anything up the front. They're forgetting mm. about reclaim. Just keeping that in mind, they're focusing so much on static metal extractors rather than on reclaim, which is a lot more efficient. I mean, they're at plus 60. Granted, it's comic catcher, but even then, once they get above like plus 40 or plus 50, reclaim mm -hmm. should probably be most of your economy. And I mean, right now, Yogg'Soth doesn't have the center taken yet, but they have it. Yogg'Soth has two-thirds of the map right now. Mm -hmm. And I, he has I was more than enough military to uh, push in as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, the commander might get. The commander's gonna get dived, so at least that's something, but the burst could kill all the Scorch. No, no, Feldhaus right. is being Ooh. smart about it. Still not. Yeah, not bad. Quite in the best place, but yes, they, they knew what they were doing. 
Okay, clearing out the defenses is going to let them access the reclaim field. I like this. As long as they actually access the reclaim field. Mm -hmm. And they have access I mean, to none of it at this point. If he doesn't send constructors out there to then use the reclaim, he might as well have just let Yogg-Sothoth... He might as well just hit the resign button. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true, too. <laughs> Yogg-Sothoth has an economic advantage. They have 20 metal over. Mm -hmm. Like, Felthos could get that economic advantage to parity if they reclaim this field. Look at this. Two idle masons right next to some reclaim. Yeah, it's this is... Uh, not really the level of play I would expect from fail tots. So I think you might be onto something. About the choking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're taking the eastern side, okay. Uh, wait, no, they're not. No, they haven't even taken the eastern side. That's the part they have for free. Mm. That's not even the part that's contested. I don't know. Like I said, I think fail is just really focused, so focused on the unit, so focused on taking out Yogg that they really want to... They might be scared a bit of the naked expansion and the aggression expansion thing that Yogg South's doing. I'm not sure that he has an answer for these rapiers. No. Well, actually, that, Scorches can be scary against them, but you need a lot to make it work. Yeah. I think there might be too much here. They're certainly going to clear out this entire western side. Yeah, well, Yogg-Sothoth goes to the eastern side. That's still naked, though. I mean, yogg didn't have a chance to build up the eastern side, but Feldas is not pushing in at the same time going around the back. If they yes. got rid of the factory, that's actually not very well defended, although well enough for four Scorchers. Well, five Scorchers, rather, but it's well enough for that, but still, like... They could go around the back, but they're not paying attention. Yes. There's uh, still a hole in the back there. They could get right into the nuggety metal extractor center of Yogg-Sothoth's position, but just he doesn't know. He hasn't tried there. No, he has. He does know. Oh, really? He tried earlier in the game, remember? And he has these Scorchers idling right next to it. Oh, boy. This is, yeah. This is painful. All yeah, right, no, so no, he's trying no, to no. lock down his stinger. I like this. It's going to clear out the LTs for sure. Yeah, but the question is whether or not Yogg will just take the reclaim in the meantime. But yes, there are finally a bunch. There are a bunch of workers here. There it looks like he's five. he's ready to reclaim finally. Maybe yes, yes they are. There's the reclaim. Yogg stuff will actually have to worry about losing that field. And hey, the scorchers move a little bit more. They took a few more metal extractors and let the rapiers get into position. <laughs> I get the impression that zero K players don't understand the concept of timings. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> It's it, it's occurred to me a lot of times watching games. I hate to I hate to badmouth, but it's like I'm thinking. Remember watching StarCraft play, and it's like mm -hmm, there's so mm -hmm. much to specific timings. There's so much to it in terms of attacking at the right time when something's out of position, or you know, playing mind games like that and mixing people up to open them up like that. It's just I I see people setting up opportunities and having the knowledge to know that it's an opportunity they've set up. They have a setup, but not capitalizing. That happened a lot yep. in this tournament. I was like, what? I hate to talk about it, though, because I feel like I wouldn't be able to do it in practice because there's a few basics that I... Like my, I sure, play sure. A huge amount. I will play a but lot it, more once quick matching comes up. But. Right. But it's a valid point still. I mean, nonetheless, it's something It's something else they could do to improve their play that's really not capitalized on. You're absolutely right. Part of that might be because it's so much harder to do in 0K. I mean, StarCraft is sort of more, uh, I guess, calculable in a sense. Like, it's easier to determine, you know, wh when you should time your Reaper. True, yeah. There's a lot more that's set and linear. Yes. But at the same time, it's more... Basically, it's... I've probably made a setup. I've pulled my opponent's units mm -hmm. out of the way. I can see that a bunch of their army is chasing after a small portion of my army, which means yes. that they probably don't have a large army that I'd have to deal with if I attacked head-on right now. Yeah. For the next 10 seconds. Or 15 seconds. Something like that. Now, some short but meaningful amount of time. Mm -hmm. And Yogg-Sothoth's donating a bunch of metal. Wow. Look yeah, at this the, Ravager ball. The field's up to 16,000, or 1,600. And anyway. still these constructors are idling. Yeah, I thought they were on reclaim. Well, one of them's on reclaim. The other five are doing nothing. Oh, there we go. Seven. There we go. Now they're on. Now they're all on reclaim. Now failed us has finally got economy parity, or just about economy parity. Now let's see what he does with it. Ravager ball. For sure, don't suicide that ravager ball, though. Not they're gonna suicide the ravager ball. Mm. They're playing on CCR. I think they're only thinking in terms of suiciding units. <laughs> like, oh, this is the suicide unit map. So you're not supposed to have units alive. What? what no, no. We're supposed to be like Field Marshal Haig here. And Rocco's from Yogg-Sothoth. That's interesting. I wonder what the motivation was. 
Well, yeah. I mean, he already has know. the slashers if he wants to clear defenses, but I guess uh, clearing I can't understand his ways. Probably better for clearing Ravagers, although I say that as a bunch of them get cornered mm -hmm. by Ravagers, and ultimately that doesn't get shown. I mean, really, Scorchers do fine for that, so I'm not sure. I'm thinking they might be trying to, they might be predicting some change. I don't know what that, I mean, if they were predicting air, then Gremlins. I just want to focus yeah, their, they might want to focus their vehicle factory on, ra on like, Ravagers and then use Rockos to deal with the Ravagers coming from Phaelothos. Okay, yeah, that's focus a Focus each nice factory, one. maybe. But I don't know, they're going, they're going Warrior Rocco, so I have no idea. The Warrior is okay, Assault Force, mm -hmm. Light Assault, I can see that. Well, that's but just a, this is a pretty good generic mid-game composition from Cloakie Bob. I'd say we're heading into the late game and we should start seeing some escalation rather than um, rock a warrior spam. I'd agree with you for the fact that Yogg has three times the army value of Failthoss right now. So it's really irrelevant. Yeah, it's really irrelevant. Failthoss can basically, as long, if they, if they play super smart, then they'll get out of this. If they say GG, then they lose. There we go. And that's what happened. Well... We're on to game three. Yeah, what what happened see, there? Probably. Well, Failthos got off. Actually, Yogg'sdoth got off, and Failthos was donating way too much and not reclaiming what they had gotten donated to them. Yeah, he had such an opportunity there with the reclaim field. I wonder why he didn't quite get to it. Maybe like just uh, not nerves. enough APM. Nerves, I think. Nerves. Nerves and focusing too much on attacking. Something in that vein. Yeah, I'm guessing. You don't need 9999 APM to not idle Scorchers. You need like 200. It's not that high. <laughs> I mean, I'll grant it's a little bit harder to have high APM in 0k because a lot of it's mouse driven, but still. There's a lot you can queue. True. Like, queue, jump away, do other stuff, jump back, or jump between fights. It's like, you don't need that much APM. Although yeah, I say 200 as if it's nothing. and Yeah, I know. 200 is, like, unattainable for me. When I was playing StarCraft 2, I think I barely clocked 100. Maybe just a bit over. Oh, okay. I, when I was playing Brood War, it was, like, 150 mm. was low for me. <laughs> I didn't get up to 300 very often, but it was, like... Oh, wow. 200, 250... 300 is the baseline for professional. But 250, 200 was, like, okay, I guess I'm doing all right. I mean, I'm glad that 0k doesn't require that much APM for a lot of the basic stuff. Me but too. it's still you gotta respect the fact that it requires a lot of APM if you want to do something advanced. It's like it scales with APM usage. It doesn't require it, but it still scales with it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. it certainly requires a lot of multitasking as well. Well, that's the thing is that it's, it's it's that you don't need it to do basic stuff. All the basic stuff is taken care of for you. So for your basic economy, your production, all that stuff, yeah, it's done for you. You don't need high APM. That's exactly true. But mm -hmm. for for the stuff that involves actual decision making especially when it comes to combat because combat so much split second decision making in terms of where units Absolutely. are while you're attacking every combat requires a fair amount of APM and then you're jumping between combats that also requires a lot of focus and multitasking and attention and that's yeah your APM still has to be high if you want to be able to deal with all that it doesn't have to be high to deal with basic stuff it doesn't have to be high all throughout the game but it does have to be able to get high when necessary yeah I would agree with that. Anyway, we are on living to living lands. lands. I'm going to write that down. Exciting. An I'm... actual 1v1 map. Yay! We have those? Wow. What a novel concept. Anyway. Wow, I'm sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so cloning Google Frog apparently still wait, really? It's been half an hour it's been like forty minutes. No, that's our battle. Eighteen minutes. Wait a sec. No, that's Sierra. Yeah, that's What the heck? Apparently they didn't start for a little while. Alright, whatever. Mm. No big deal. I mean, it is a bit of a big deal. I don't want to have to jump into losers pre finals, but we will have to drop to losers finals no matter what, so yeah, no problem. I think we have time. Like, it won't take them that long. It's 18 minutes into what'll probably be a half-hour game at most. And this will probably take about 10 minutes. So, Felthos shields, Cloakie for Yogg. 
Cloakley Shield matchup. Hmm. Classic. Great. Perfect. All right. I okay. wonder what adjustments Failtoss is planning to make after his last one. I wonder what. I wonder how he would assess his performance where his failures were. Hopefully, he uh, focuses a bit more on reclaim if the opportunity Hopefully. comes up. Although we're gonna see, we're gonna see early scythe, and that's gonna mean Failtoss is probably gonna have to. Well, they have early defense, but that <laughs> scythe could be a problem. These early scythes are so effective. It feels like recently. I uh, well, maybe I'm just saying that because I lost to some earlier in the tournament. Oh. But, uh, is that forever? Was that what forever did to you? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You, two sides and uh, sniped my factory pretty much immediately. So uh, maybe I just don't know how to defend them, but it's certainly a niche use. A bit of a good hail mary early on. I guess it leaves you defenseless against raiders, of course. But if you get the factory, I mean, it's so devastating. That's tough to do, though. And in this case, they won't. Galaxoth won't get the factory. They'll be able to get a couple of mexes, maybe. Sure. I mean, I'm guessing it's probably more of a sleeper thing. Like, put it in there, wait until they don't really expect it, and then jump at it. But that defense yeah, is going to be a problem. But I don't see why you would build one so early without the intent to use it. I mean, that's metal that you could put towards something else that will make you more metal in the long run, which makes that side faster to build in the future. I mean, if you're spending 250 True. metal and then not using it, that's, you know, however many glaives, two or three, that you don't have now to defend with. That might have been a matchup thing, though. They might Because they did it blind. They did it before they knew where the matchup was. True. They might have done it as a hard read on... In fact, a second scythe. Now. I don't know. I guess a hard read on light vehicles, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like light vehicles have a hard time dealing with them. I mean, darts can scout them pretty well, though. That's the thing. But dirtbags can as well. Cloaky would not have a very hard time against them. Glaives are fast enough. Mm. Jump bots would probably have a hard time against them, so that might be another hard read. Hmm. So I don't know why I'd use jump bots in a tournament. I mean, they're strong, but they aren't super well developed. The meta isn't well known, and Failtoss is not, as far as I know, that keen on jump bots. I haven't seen them to be much of a jump bot player. And now the Ooh. sides get exposed. Ouch. Well, Scythe gets exposed. The second Scythe doesn't. I mean, if Galaxos plays this right, it could lull Failtoss into a false sense of security. True. And it could also go the other way and force him to build more defenses than he needs to to try and uh, defend against the Scythe Raids. But I think Yogg'Sathoth would have to have some success first. I mean, there you saw, you know, the downside of the Gambit, which was he got exposed before he could even deal any damage with the Scythe, and so it's really just wasted metal, now donated mm -hmm. to Failtoss. And another Scythe coming out of the factory. Yeah, Yogg's starting to really... This is a total gamble. Doubling down. Looks like he might be heading for the comm snipe, or at least threatening to, again, try and force more defenses than necessary. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, the thing is, the main army is out of position. That's a big deal. That's like, a good point. If they get into the base right now, mm -hmm. with that false sense of security on their side, that we could, could be looking at a factory snipe. Yeah, that's exactly Possibly. what I'm thinking. Like, get rid of the defender, get rid of the factory. Well, they're heading in that way, so we'll see what happens. Oh, but the Lotus as well, I don't know. The Lotus is manageable, but it would take a little while. That might slow them down too much. Valuable time, yeah. And then they'd have to still get the factory after. But they could clean up the defenses and the metal extractors. Even that yes. by itself would be a big deal. Now look, Yogg'Sathoth hasn't even claimed oh, anything, no. but he's starting three mexes. Oh yeah, and see now he's not even heading. Oh, he's going to head towards the solar wall. Well, if have they're to run around attention. again at No, they're not heading towards it too much. They'll, they'll see it. Trying to creep up the side yeah, of the they, map, they see it. Definitely a good way to try and use the sides. So he'll run around now. Yeah, at least Yogstoth is being somewhat careful about this. Somewhat? Oh, boy. Somewhat? Well, he really ought to be. He's nope, fine. they're going for the snipe. Oh, boy. They're going for it. All right. Okay. But not committing. Okay. What the heck? If, I mean, if he pulls away, recloaks, regens, then comes okay, back. Okay, fair and enough. Yeah, that, I was about to say, like, okay, it might, might be recloaking. Might be jumping into the trees and exposing themselves. That's his plan. I mean, there's really two really good theories on how to use size. The, the their one plan is, is to expose themselves? No, I meant... Um, oh, sorry, okay. I was... <laughs> I was in my own head for a moment, but um, I was saying that there's really two good theories on, on how to use scythes to uh, either one, go for a snipe of factory or commander snipe, or two, to just harass, poking it out, because they're so tanky, they can easily snipe a mechs or two, uh, even under pressure of a single LLT, so you don't really have to destroy all the defenses. You can just poke in, snipe the mechs, recloak, and then regenerate, run back now, in. it looks like they're going for the psychological warfare aspect, forcing Filthos into defenses, but... I would say that's the more effective in this matchup. 
because there's really not much of a chance of a comm snipe or even a factory snipe at this True. point. True. And I mean, shields, they're kind of slow, but they're kind of tough. So forcing them into one spot makes it easier. I just don't see Yogstoth necessarily capitalizing on that. I'm not sure if they know what style they're playing right now. I think you're two. right. I think you're absolutely right. Because they're they're making psychological tactics. Like they're they're doing terror. Like they're they're making it work. They're they're getting Feltos scared. Like Feltos is too scared to move. It's true. But yeah, he has all, all of his raiders by his commander to defend him, as well as a uh, nice little LT and defender nest. But the thing is that Yogstoth should know that, and Yogstoth mm. knowing that would expand basically naked just expand yes. everywhere and Yogstop right. plays that psychological game they play the aggression to bask expansion game that's what they do you're absolutely right so i'm not sure what they're trying to do here yeah so he's really executing you know the hard part of the strategy and not capitalizing on it yet see and the other part about it he has 500 metal now tied up in these sides that he hasn't really been putting to very good use i guess he's focusing on the center to try and keep this uh swarm of bandits from marching into his base but yeah. Still, I stand by it. Well, it's not really the center anymore. They're, they're back, basically just looking down at the base with contempt. Oh, this Rocco commander is going to do well against the warriors. Mm hmm. Rocket launcher, auto repair. It's probably got a targeting system at level two. Sniper coming out of Yogzatoth's factory. Now, these bandits don't really have to be sitting here. Of course, uh, he's probably worried about the size. But there we go. Small contingent breaks off, heading up the eastern side. This is undefended, too. Should turn out pretty well. Oh, except for a uh, warrior heading to intercept. Yeah, the warrior will stop them. And the Still size, a nice attempt. The size at least get rid of the western side. Here we go. This there is all right. Yeah. Finally, capitalization. Clear that out. Ooh, a roach coming in to try and clean it up, clean it up though. Tricky. That will work. Uh, yeah, yeah move definitely going to get... Oof. Okay. 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 I guess that everyone's happy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it blew up something for both sides. That roach was equal opportunity. Yep. Very in the fair. worst possible way. <laughs> anyway. Sniper on top of that. Sheesh, Yogstuff. Just building a racer already. Oh, and speaking uh -oh. of... Uh, hey, Feltos' commander's down. There we go. So Feltos' the down for Rocco economy. Con. Yeah, and he had these bandits right there, too, just out of position to defend. I think they were trying to deal with the scythe over to the side and got messed mm -hmm. up. So there we go. I guess we can say the scythes did pay off now. Well, we can pretend. That's for sure. <laughs> Certainly exposed that roach. Actually, that's a big deal, because that roach being up here, that would have given Feltos a lot more power. Mm -hmm. Although they're currently still in a very strong position, so I don't know. Their economy is not great, but their military was okay until it just died like that. Oof. Ouch. And just left all this reclaim okay. still in range of these defenses from Yagzatatsu. And there's the GG. Okay, so that Immediately is... After. That's the winners' finals. There's that. Okay, so now I don't know if Clone and Google Frog are done. <laughs> it's been how long was that? Was that ten minutes? Ah, uh, eight minutes. Off by two. But yeah, Google Frog and Clone are done. Not sure who won, but whoever did is now up against Yogzadov. Who's hmm. doing well? Also, congratulations on fifth place. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, better than getting knocked out in the first round. I mean, you had a pretty tough competition, too. Yeah, it's true. I got. To, I feel like I had some lucky lucky engagements in the, um, in the loser's bracket games. Okay, so where... Alright, loser's finals on... Oh, clone. Okay. Clone advances. Clone gets third place. Google Frog gets fourth. Clone fights possibly for first. Google Frog gets fourth. Mm -hmm. Wow, Clone's really been running it back since that first match with Forever. I know. They got I was so surprised proof. too. It was yeah. Well, I'm sure he was uh, not too happy with that loss. Well, they beat Forever. I mean, Forever did lose, but yeah, it's like got something to prove. Mm. Kind of get first. Actually, Clone was my favorite to win to begin with. To be honest, so. Ah. Like, Clone, wow. Feltos, Yogstoth, Google Frog were all kind of up there, and I thought Clone was probably going to win because they did really well in the last 2v2 tournament. And I thought, okay, they did so well in the 2v2 tournament, and they were just doing well in general. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they'll probably do really well here, too. And so I was shocked when Forever won. I was like, what? Right. But no, Forever did quite well, too. So, yeah. Thank goodness for that loser's bracket. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I was, I was vouching for loser's bracket for a while. Oh, I'm such a big fan. Well, just for me, it's like, that's kind of 
a normal thing. Like, you just you you have losers brackets. That that's how you do it. That, that's yeah. how you do tournaments. You have it's double elimination. That I've honestly never participated in another tournament that was single elim, like the old ZK tournament. So mm -hmm. same here. Man, it's weird having a two minute delay and watching the chat. It's like bandit suicide. Well, we're talking oh. about the the brackets, but old yeah, news, I guess. <laughs> like, that was two whole minutes ago. What are you talking about? But yeah, get with it. I really wish I could delay the game and not the stream. <laughs> That'd be nice. It have some minor logistical hurdles, but I think it overall be better. <laughs> Does anyone wouldn't have that problem? then Hitbox would actually work as it should, where everything's fast and responsive. And, all right, it's on Sierra. And it is best of three, because Losers Finals are best of three, as an exception to the Losers Bracket in general. Oh, yeah, music. Hmm. Uh, gun death. That doesn't happen ever, but... How would I know? Well, I guess I wouldn't hear anything. Yeah, you you probably just wouldn't hear anything. Yeah. It'd be pretty obvious. What? <laughs> Sorry, that was too obvious. <laughs> so, uh, Sierra, you said, was the map here? I've actually, I don't even so. know. I don't even know what that map is. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. sorry. It's Valis Mananaris. Sierra was the one oh, that was good. played in the last... Yeesh, what? The hitbox thing has been updated since... Brr. Actually, Twitch is worse about this. Mananus. Okay. But yeah, sorry. Sierra was the match that Kuhn and Goofrog just played, which we didn't see. There we go. Now it's saved. Alright. So yeah. I said fifth. I said fifth place. Congratulations. Whatever. Scousey is criticizing me for something I didn't say. I, I can't win. Apparently. So just a bit of trivia in case uh, anyone else didn't know, like myself, Valis Marineris is apparently the name of an actual valley on Mars. Uh, yep. I had no idea. So Massive. Wikipedia. Big feature. Yeah, wait. Felthos left? What? Where's Felthos? That's too bad. I hope he didn't drop. They're in the running for winning. What the hell? They're not even on the server at all. Mm. Well, I can imagine those being very frustrating games. True. But now Forever's volunteering to jump in instead. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Google Frog will be the first to jump in. Like, oh, I'd like to volunteer as well. I mean, if we're taking <laughs> volunteers. Okay, so what'll happen is we'll wait a little bit to see if Felthos cools down and comes back, and if that doesn't happen in a few minutes, then it'll be Kloon and Yogzatov in the Grand Finals. Cool. Sounds good. Sounds good. Although I really would have liked to see Felthos get a run back, but... Yeah. Whatever. I mean, Felthos has actually been doing really... Like, they've been going really strong. I mean, you don't make it here without uh, having at least a bit of talent. Yeah, and I... I I cast Filthouse games all the time. And they're quite good. Filthouse is... I, I, I see them all the time. So I've become somewhat familiar with their playstyle. Which is funny, because I actually haven't. I I have a hard time identifying playstyles. <laughs> There's sometimes I do, like, clone being super defensive and not wanting to lose units. Mm -hmm. And drone being the opposite. And Yoxtoth having that aggressive expansion thing that I've noticed. But yeah, I have the same problem. I think it's harder to pin people down to a certain playstyle because you have to be so versatile in 0k. I mean, different situations can evoke different playstyles from the same player. Mm -hmm. I 
Okay, well that's annoying, but well, everyone's free to forfeit like, if if they want. I'd rather they say I am forfeiting <laughs> rather than just drop out. Yeah. Yeah, but yes, I mean you're allowed to forfeit. That's that's permitted. I'm pretty sure. I I wouldn't forbid it at all. I don't know if Lotus forbidding it, but I don't see why you would. It's generally a bad idea to forbid forfeits or forfeiture. Nope. String them up, man. This will not be tolerated. Forfeiting. I. Oh, that's a little extreme. A thousand lashes. I, I think that would kill them. Like, by the hundredth. 999 lashes, then. But they're still dead. <laughs> they're no less dead. Anyway, I... Yeah, three minutes until Grand Finals. If I... Three minutes until they start just waiting around and talking about how people are to be tortured for forfeiture, apparently. I, I don't agree with that. I don't think it's a very good reason for torture. Well, I understand it's a very controversial stance, but I stand by it. <laughs> okay. I disagree. I, I think I think disqualification is... Actually, not even disqualification. You're forfeiting. You're losing. You're already losing. That's like you're, Why would you need a punishment at that point? I respectfully disagree. I'm a big fan of uh, corporal punishment. <laughs> it's, uh, your counter argument is just, I want to hurt people? Yeah, that's, I mean, that was exactly it. I just, I would like to hurt people. I'm a very violent person. Man, okay, you can tell we that we've both that been on record. Like, we have that on record. Kane is a violent person. Just, uh, just be careful if you're ever around Washington. Mm -hmm. You know, you might end up running into him and he might just torture you out of the blue. Yeah. I don't know. Definitely don't ever resign a 1v1 because I'll find you and I'll give you a thousand lashes. So... Okay. Sorry, it's... I mean, unless what you actually mean is that you have a box full of eyelashes and you just give them to me as like a thousand eyelashes. I don't know what I'd do with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm sorry. There must have been a misunderstanding. You probably thought I was referring to some sort of whip with a metal piece at the end, some sort of cat or nine tails. But yes, actually, I meant cosmetic fake eyelashes. I'll okay. give them to you as a gift. I would hope so. <laughs> so anyway, anyone listening... It's that if you you win, you win. If you lose, or if you forfeit, you get the consolation prize of a box of fake eyelashes. I'm trying to decide right now if this is better or worse than dead air. I think it's better, although if someone does get accidentally tortured in the state of Washington, you may end up being summoned for a court case. Okay, Just well, saying. You may be on the suspect list. I'm prepared for uh, such an eventuality. Okay, I guess if you have enough, a good enough lawyer. Anyway, it looks like we are going to be just going straight to Grand Finals because Yogg's Fail Thoughts has apparently chosen to forfeit. Great. Save me. Save you from Palestine and Anis. Oh, well, I meant from uh, just, just bad banter. Oh, I see. Save you from incriminating yourself in a later crime. An absurdist comedy. Absurdist comedy is okay, but just, you know. Depends on the comedian, probably. Not kill people today. <laughs> Maybe some other day, just not today. <laughs> because killing people is inconvenient. Inconvenient. So for everyone involved involves too much paperwork. So I might have uh, lost.